Hey, it's Wednesday. It is February 16th. And let me tell you, what a wonderful day today was. The weather was gorgeous. I mean, it was, it's February, and it was almost 60 today. What's going on with that? It was just beautiful day. And, uh, you know, got a very productive day at work, but that's besides the point. As you see, when I was in, uh, what was it? When I was in, when I was in school, that nice days like this during winter, what would you expect to have happen at some point during the day? Uh, you're right, you know, fire drill. Because, you know, schools never, you know, use, never will waste an opportunity when there's a nice day where it's really warm in winter to not send everybody out to the parking lot for a few minutes in order to get that, in order to meet their monthly requirements. So, you know, therefore, it's February, it's 60, and, uh, you know, it's going to be like this. You know, it's an N, you know, and 6 plus 3 is... And then, uh, all right, children, everybody, uh, you know, shuffle out one at a time, last one out, close the door, and, uh, you know, do that, because, you know, we all know it's a nice... Uh, Warm day today, and you know, the school has to do this to meet their monthly quarter cards. All right, shoo, shoo, shoo. You know, we'll be back in in five minutes to continue the lesson. And, okay. But, uh, you know, that's what happens. And, uh, you know, I could pretty, I remember there were a few times. It's in eighth grade. A few day, uh, there was, it was a day in uh, February and a day in March. Or was it a day in January or February? One of those two. I don't remember. But they had the fire drill in. Seventh period the first time, and then in sixth period the second time. And I remember, you know, I remember it was, what was it? You know, first and seventh period, math class, you know, it's like talking about, you know, algebraic functions, and all of a sudden, and it's like, okay, oh, by the way, that is the sound of the fire alarm in my uh, middle school. That's the one from the fire alarm collection, so that is accurate. Otherwise, um, and then the other time, we were starting a unit on mortality in eighth grade health. You know, Mr. Sinclair is talking about whatever, you know, we're talking about whatever, and then, uh, you know, that's what happens. And, uh, yeah, got to spend, you know, a few minutes outside, then you hear the all clear tone, and we all go back in. And so, you know. And, of course, the whole thing about fire drills is just amusing, anyway, because, you know, schools like to have... How do I say it? Schools like to have surprise fire drills. You know, why they can't say like they do in the real world. You know, they say, hey, we're going to do a fire drill on this day. You know, so this is how it's going to be. No, they want you to think that every, you know, alarm is the same thing. I don't know. It seems, to me at least, if, you know, if, if you're blurring the line between what is reality and what is not. Because I've seen the way people do it. It's like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and nobody's taking it seriously, and the next thing you know, oh, you know, the school really is burning down, because people are, you know, just taking their sweet time, because they know it's another drill. You know. It's like I tell my coworkers, you know, because I'm the one who has to chase them out of the building. Basically, in my office, you know, there was one time, I'm walking down the hallway, you know, towards my office, and next thing, and next thing you know, we hear this. And so, I mean... You know, I'm going down the, uh, you know, I'm sitting there looking at me like, do you know about this? Like, do I look like I knew about this? And I'm having to chase him out of the, chase him out of the building. I said, no, this is not planned. I would have told you if it was planned. And so therefore, no, this is, you should consider this to be that the building might actually be on fire. Get out, please. And unlike the time when I did have the planned drill, it's like people actually did, you know, go when, you know, the alarm went off. And so... You know, there is something to say about drawing that distinction. Because if people think it might be, you know, something important, they'll go. Whereas, you know, fire drills, I don't know, people don't, you know, I don't know. The joke I always, the joke, the, the, the my standard thread is if you ever want to hear what the fire alarm sounds like, I'll just go across the street to CVS, get a big cigar, and, you know, stand under a smoke head, and eventually you'll hear it. And so, you know, because, you know, you stand under, under the thing, right, with, you know, with a big cigar long enough, and next thing you know, that's going to happen. And, uh, you know, that's just the way, you know, that's the way these things are. And, and yeah, this is my cigar, a Sharpie. Yeah, big deal. Anyway, <laughs> I 
don't know. Of course, when it comes to surprise fire drills, my high school in particular was not that secretive about surprise fire drills. Because, yeah, they wouldn't announce it over the PA, and, you know, Schindler would knock in on the PA and say, says, may I have your attention, please? I am, we are going to have a fire drill now. Oh, he did that sometimes, but not always. Instead, you know, they would just be all, you know, now, of course, you'd see that the teachers would be, would be stalling a little bit, and then all of a sudden, you know, you hear, you know, something like that. All right, that's actually not the right sound anyway, but I don't have a 4040 recording. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, you'll hear that all of a sudden. It's like, oh, dear. So that's why they're stalling today, because they knew there was going to be one of them's. And, I mean, do you blame them? And, of course, they would put, and, of course, also, if you went in the office, they would put up a sign, right? And it would look like, here, I'll show you. Here, hang on. It would look like this on the uh, bulletin board. It would be... Alrighty. Da -da -da. Just got a marker on my desk. Alright. Da da da, da da da, da 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 da, da 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 da. You see, it would look like this, right? They would say that, and um, they put that on the board. Actually, it would be you know typewritten, but you know I just thought it's I'm improvising, and I just got marker on my desk. Well, I hope this was worth it. And they would put something like this on the bulletin board in the office, you know, in a very conspicuous place. That way everybody saw it next to the teacher mailboxes. They were in a very conspicuous place. They were right out in the open. You never saw my high school before they renovated it, I bet you. But yeah, the teacher mailboxes, I don't know where the teacher mailboxes are now, but I bet you they're not there anymore. But they put them in the, you know, in the front office, and this would be right next to it whenever fire drills were coming. And then when it came to be that time, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you'd hear, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you'd hear the fire alarm. Again, that's not the right tone for the high school, but whatever. But, you know, that would be, it would be that time, and everybody would have to, you know, go on out, and everybody knew, you know. Of course, my high school never had fire drills in the middle of the period. So, of course, if it's at the beginning of the period, yes, all of a sudden, you hear the sound. And, I mean, you know, yes, we know what that is. Okay, we know it's at the beginning of the period. Obviously, you need to, you're trying to meet your quota here. And so, okay, sure. And so, I don't know. It was amusing. And, uh, but it's like, yeah, it's like, of course, then you know that every time you have, you know, it's like, of course, you also know you're at the end of the, you know, I'm going to go back to the Edward sound, I think, because, you know what, that just sounds very fire alarmy to me today. And so it's like every time you go to the, uh, you know, every time, you know, every time you get to the last day of the month, I remember it was the day before Thanksgiving break, and there was no November left in school, no school days left for November after Thanksgiving. Get through the whole day, the last Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and then you get to fourth block, which in my high school was the last period of the day. Get about two minutes into the period, you hear this. Well, not that. It was the simplest word. Whatever. I don't have that sound. Forgive me. And so it's like, you know, oh, okay, yeah, we knew they were going to do this. They were going to make, they're making their quota. And then so, you know, yeah, surprise fire drill my foot. Obviously, you know, even the administration did not take it. So it's like, yes, we have to do this. So we're doing it, you know. And that was that. I don't know. It's like, if you're not going to take it seriously, why bother doing it? Of course, that's just like even in Virginia, you know. Despite that they would have a monthly requirement, you know, you have to do a fire drill once a month. You know, and the four, the four and the first day. So you have, you know, you start the, like the week before Labor Day. So you have one, two, three, four in the first four weeks. And then you have October, November, you know, December, uh, January, <laughs> February, March, April, May. And then that's about what? Twelve fire drills. We'll go with that. Since I'm not going to sit there and count all of it. But uh, you have 12 fire drills, you know, it's like, all the time, despite the requirement is monthly, you know, you'd go, I remember it was a few months, I think, what was it? Yeah, it was a number of years, you know, we missed fire drills all during the winter, we didn't, just didn't have them. 
Remember in sixth grade we missed December, and then, uh, yeah, we missed December, and that was, I think, the only one we missed that year. And then in seventh grade we missed January, February, and March. Of course, that was a winter that was, that was, that was an exceptional winter. And then, you know, it's like the first Monday in April. There it was. I was like, oh, I've missed you. And then, that was just like in ninth grade, we missed December, January, and February. And then, it was like at the end of March. It was like, it's like, I remember this particular fire drill because it was one of those rare end of the period fire drills that my high school didn't like to have. Usually they like to have it at the beginning of the period, but they did, would reserve like to have them at the end, very end of the period. This was an end of the period one. And they did, what was it? I remember it because, you see, I had launched Schumann Web for the first time ever, like that same, like the weekend before. And so that was, you know, a very near and dear moment to me. I mean, you know, think looking back, hey, Schumann Web, fire drill, you know. Funny how it works like that, right? And so, you know, and of course that one was genuinely a surprise to me. I did not know that this kind of thing existed back then. So, you know, that's just the way these things work. Of course now in the real world, you know, if there's a fire alarm going off, it's probably for real. Or at least indicating a true state of the sensor and not somebody who is trying to get all the occupants practiced on how evacuation works. Is that, no, it probably went off on its own or, some, or there's actually a legitimate problem. And it's just like, and because in, in the real world, if they're going to be doing anything, you know, that's, they know they're going to be setting off, then they will say, hey, we're going to be setting off the system. And either it's going to be for maintenance or we are planning to have a scheduled, you know, fire drill. And we want you to leave the building with us. So that's just the way that works. And so I remember we had one of those at work in uh, August of 2008. We had a planned fire drill. And that was exciting. Because I got to, you know, kick everybody out of the suite. You know, all those days you just want to tell them, get out, get out, get out. I actually did. You know, I got to say this. You know, fire drill. Told them, send them an email. And then I said, and then when the time comes, at the time we had, uh, we a lot, you know, 34s. And I'm going to give you a 7002T. So it's like the appointed time. Here it comes. And so, you know, everybody, you know, says, Okay. Let's go. It was fun. And then so, you know, you know, it was interesting like that. But yeah, and then of course, anytime it was accidental or anything, it's like, yeah, all right, go, go, go. You know, but yes, beautiful days, beautiful day today. I'll tell you, it was, you know, it was cold this morning. But yeah, later on, it turned out to be a just absolutely gorgeous day. I mean, I could have not worn my coat coming home today, but it is just easier to remember the coat when I'm wearing it on my shoulders and not carrying it in my arm like this. And if you wear your coat around your waist, you know, commuting, you look kind of strange. I mean, there are other times when I've worn my coat around my waist and I have pictures of me doing that. And it's on Schumann Web somewhere where I'm doing that. But yeah, if you carry your coat, you know, or if you wear your coat around your waist, you know, that just don't do that. Don't do that when you're commuting with adults, you know. That's just the way that is. <laughs> oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Otherwise, speaking of things that start with fire, um, I get, I'm getting the rare opportunity to fire Comcast cable. Yes, I'm getting Verizon Fios uh, internet service to my house. It will be, um, they're putting it on the 28th, and the Verizon man will be here, you know, going, why did that just wiggle? Because I just banged the desk. That's why. Don't do that. All right. And the Fios guy is coming and he's going to put in all of my, um, um, you know, he's going to, you know, he's going to connect the lines up, you know, disconnect, you know, the Comcast line from the thing. Then after they all hook it up, then I cancel Comcast. But so they're going to give me the set-top box. They're going to give me uh, whatever Fios modem. I think that is the set-top box. I don't know. I'll find out when I get there. But it's supposed to, but it's supposed to be I get... And here's the big point. I get a much, much bigger pipe. And it's like, why do I need a bigger pipe? I don't. But number one, I don't like Comcast. And uh, if Fios is going to give me like way better service for a lot, um, you know, for not much of a price difference, then uh, 
I'm going to go there. Because Comcast, I don't know, they have, the, the attitude of Comcast is, it's like, hey, we're the cable company. We're here. What are you going to do? It's like Pepco. They're a bunch of butts, too. Because it's like, hey, we're Pepco. Who else are you going to talk to? You know, we're the, only, we're the only game in town, and we know that you know that. And so what are you going to do? So I'll just tell them this. No. <laughs> okay, I'm getting way too much mileage out of that sign. But, uh, but yes, just tell them, hey, you know, that's, you know. Yeah, but yeah, I get to get rid of Comcast. And uh, so that'll be exciting. And it's like, I don't know. It's like, I don't need a bigger, like I said, I don't need a bigger pie, but it should be exciting. And I get more channels because I used to have the basic El Cheapo, cheapest and worst, not even digital, cable with Comcast. Because, I mean, to be quite honest, the only channel that, the only channel I ever watch on uh, on the TV regularly is uh, TBD, a.k.a. News Channel 8. And usually then it's in the morning and I'm kind of half asleep while I'm watching just to see what, you know, the local news is. Because for those not familiar, TBD slash News Channel 8 is a 24-hour uh, uh, all-local news channel. I love it. And so, yeah, I get to, I watch that and I'm like half asleep in the morning when I'm doing it. But, you know, you get the big local headlines and that's what's important. But otherwise, though, Comcast basically whittled me down to about 20 channels. They gave me the broadcast networks, a couple news channels, I have TBD, and I have whatever county public access, whatever channels, you know, the ones that nobody watches that are on there. Remember, I got to watch a county hearing with, or no, community meeting with Ike Leggett, who is the county administrator in Montgomery County. Got to watch Ike Leggett on TV, so that was kind of fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. Otherwise, um, but yeah, otherwise, I have, like, it left me like 20 channels, and it's like, if I'm paying, I'm not, you know, it's like a dollar a month per channel, I don't know, with the, I don't know. It wasn't very good. It was not very good, and I didn't like it, so that's the end of them and I will be so glad and they say why are you canceling your service because you're Comcast and I don't like you that's why and it's like uh, you know and it's like that's why everybody's always I remember it was back in 2007 I think yes it was it was the Chris Core show back on as Chris Core would say now some other radio station and he would, and uh, there was and he was talking about this woman from I think Manassas, and what she did is she was is she had previously had problems with Comcast, and she went to the com and she had had not been able to have to get the problems resolved. So she went to the Comcast office in Manassas, came in with a hammer and did about $1,000 in damage to their equipment. Yes, she really did. $1,000 in damage to the equipment in the Comcast office. It's like, you know, this is like computers and printers and other junk, you know. Not anything that would prevent anybody from watching their stories. And so that's what they did. So, you know, and she ended up getting, I think, arrested and cited, as kind of you would expect. What Chris Core said is, he said... What, he, asked, he asked his listeners, what would you do? Would you A, da -da, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. He said, would you A, give her a slap on the wrist, B, throw the book at her, or C, declare a holiday in her honor? And I think most of the people either said a little slap on the wrist or declare a holiday. Nobody wanted to throw the book at her because everybody hates stupid Comcast. That's just the way it is. I don't know of anybody that actually likes Comcast. Do you? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't particularly like them after they whittled my channel selection down to just about nothing. And of course, obviously that lady from Manassas didn't like Comcast that much either. But you know, nobody likes Comcast. And I'm getting fires and I'm excited and so that's that. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to be excited. I'll let you know how Fios is once I get once I get going. And so, yeah, and in the meantime, of course, I get to deal with stupid Comcast. And the internet's been fairly decent, but yeah, their TV and their customer service is kind of, I don't know, not very good. 
Well, anyway, I think that's everything. And uh, so I will talk to you next time. I haven't done one of these in a long time, so I'm glad to be doing it again. And so I will talk to you later. Have a good night. Hope everybody has a great rest of the week. And ta-ta.